Didn't know today would be our last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door and tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Always made my troubles so small And you were always there to catch me When I'd fall In a world Where heroes come and go Well, God just took the only one I know So I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day When I see your face again But until then God must need another angel Around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside and I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah
celebration of daddy. I have a little something to say. Nalei! Nalei! Oi, Nalei! I cannot begin to tell you the number of times I have heard that name shouted out loud, whether outside our house, in the road, from a moving car, in town, at the beach, there is nowhere that I have accompanied my father in Trinidad and Tobago that someone did not appear out of nowhere as they say to heal him out. Nale, what happening? Where are you going? How things? We could be in Cedras, Turtle Beach, Arima, in the market. It did not matter where we were. Somebody was bound to call out my father. We had a running joke in the family. Daddy knew half of Trinidad, and the other half knew him. Daddy was by no means a politician, but he was indeed a man of the people, loved by all and always willing to go above and beyond to help someone in need, for he loved everyone. He loved to laugh and enjoy life, and to this day I have never heard anyone utter a bad thing about him. To me that speaks volumes. When my father was in his 20s, my grandparents intercepted an invitation for him to join Invader's steel band to play a guitar pan. My grandparents did not share my father's enthusiasm. In the 1960s, pan men were considered hoodlums and delinquents, and so they were having none of that. Off to the College of Surgeons in County Cork, Ireland, was daddy's fate. A week later, the entire band was detained at Rising Road Police Station for violence, and old man Jack and So Nolly was shipped out to pursue a career in medicine at the behest of his father, who was a pharmacist. Thing is, my grandfather's dreams were not my father's dreams. So instead of the stethoscope, my father picked up the hammer. Both he and Carl Alfred, my future godfather, began to sink pans, tune pans, and they formed their own side up in Ireland. They started playing different gigs, and due to the entire uniqueness of the instrument to that side of the world, they got sponsored by Guinness. They played more parties and even ended up opening live in concert for Ray Charles. My mother always spoke about her pride in seeing the televised event opening on a shot of daddy's hands as he began to perform. It was at one of these paid gigs that my father met my mother, who, by the way, in true Trini style, had stormed the party with her friends. Daddy's first words to mommy were, I don't know who you are, but I'm going to marry you. She left the party with him, and so the love affair began. This year, they would have celebrated 55 years of marriage. No easy feat. By the time I was close to three, my parents decided to leave Ireland and come to Trinidad to settle down. Leaving all she knew, mommy accompanied daddy to his homeland with me and two, and in 1973, my brother Simon joined us. The Moore family was complete. Daddy was a clock of works. Remember I said he took up the hammer? Well, it was not only to sing steel drums. Over the years, Daddy worked for several of the top construction companies, such as Wimpy, Reap Fujo and Holder, and Kichanoa. His, his career in construction took him to all corners of this Twin Island Republic, with him building schools, offices, apartments, and buildings everywhere, from Mayaro to Talparo, from Cedras to Scarborough. Hence, him knowing half of Trinidad, and the next half knowing him. When Daddy retired, he told me that he was not ready to stay home as yet. And so he decided that he was going to come to work with me in my studio. Mind you, I had no vacancies. Why I was going to tell him? No. It turned out to be the best five years I ever spent with my father. He decided that he was going to be my driver. He would collect checks, products, run to the bank, play playway, and of course his favorite part of the job, he would pick up the grandkids and bring them home. And I dare say it was probably their favorite party job too. After he slowed down and started to take things easy, my mother suffered a stroke and was left bedridden. 
This is when I discovered the hero within the man that I knew as my father. You see, daddy was a man of the people, a road man, he loved to lime. Retirement to him was best spent in the panyard playing rummy for dollar bet and reliving the good old days with his many friends over a few drinks. If it was not the panyard, it was horse racing, even fishing. It seems he just could not keep quiet, unless there was football on TV. Then he was in a trance. Communication with him was zilch. But the thing is, when mommy needed care, daddy dropped everything, literally clipping his own wings and decided the rest of his life, he dedicated the rest of his life to her, her care and her comfort. It is because of his efforts he leaves his wife, my beloved mother, to mourn in good health. He cared for her with a focus and determination that still to this day amazes me. He learned to cook all her favorite foods after years of never cooking. He bodily lifted her out of her bed into her wheelchair and took her on long drives. They would make road trips. She loved that. He did all in his power to make her life comfortable. I was truly struck by his commitment and I made it a point to tell him how proud I was to call him father. To me, that was ins inspirational. I know that he's in a better place now, out of suffering and probably knocking an iron, disturbing heaven with some sweet songs. While looking down on us with a big smile on his face, saying, don't cry for me, you know. Knock a glass, celebrate. Celebrate how much he just enjoyed life, his loved ones, and his friends. To Arnold Nolly Moore, a real soulfish, a real people's person, a real man of the people. You had a heart of gold, May your spirit live on and all your memories be cherished. May you live, may you rest in peace forever. Go on, but not forgotten. I'm happy and blessed, watching and waiting, Ying Fang Abba. 
El ver espejos, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Let us pray. God of loving kindness, listen favorably to our prayers. Strengthen our belief that your Son has risen from the dead, and our hope that your servant Nali will also rise again. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We can be seated. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in death. So that as Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. If in union with Christ we have imitated his death, we shall also imitate him in his resurrection. We must realize that our former selves have been crucified with him to destroy this sinful body and to free us from the slavery of sin. When a man dies, of course he has finished with sin. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm, the response, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Fresh and green are the pastures where he gives me repose. Near restful waters he leads me to revive my drooping spirit. He guides me along the right path. He is true to his name. If I should walk in the valley of darkness, no evil would I fear. You are there with your crook and your staff. With these, you give me comfort. You have prepared a banquet for me in the sight of my foes. My head you have anointed with oil. My cup is overflowing. Surely, Goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, 
in the Lord's own house shall I dwell forever and ever. We can. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice. I know them and they know me. Alle, alle, alle. Alle, alle, alle. Luya. Alle, alle, alle. Luya. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, two of the disciples were on their way to a village called Emmaus, seven miles from Jerusalem and they were talking together about all that had happened. Now as they talked this over, Jesus himself came up and walked by their side, but something prevented them from recognizing him. When they drew near to the village to which they were going, he made as if to go on, but they pressed him to stay with them. It is nearly evening, they said and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. Now while he was with them at table, he took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke it and handed it to them. And their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he had vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us as he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They set out at that instant and returned to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven assembled together with their companions, who said to them, Yes, it is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then they told their story of what had happened on the road and how they had recognized him at the breaking of bread. The Gospel of the Lord. We can be seated. There's a picture of Nali and his dear wife on the Catholic News, I think somewhere back in 2017, perhaps. And the story below is an interview with this great lady. And the line that stuck out for me was, he is the, the best caregiver in the world, the whole world. And what, a, what an apt description for such a man of music, for a pan man. I'm amazed listening to the details of the story. First, that, that gentle diplomatic description of his grades not being as equal to his father's grades. And so he moved from having a stethoscope in his hand to a, a hammer. The man with the hammer, David Rudder might, might sing about. Not this man, but we can sing about him, the man with the hammer. I would dare say his hands knew the hammer, 
but to see him lift his dear and beloved wife from the car gently into the wheelchair every Saturday, except during the COVID when it changed to the other day, the Sunday, and then back again on the Saturday. He was so faithful. So the man with the hammer was faithful. I'm only here five years, going on six, and I would never have known how he brought her in and out of the church had I not happened to go outside after the Mass, after greeting everybody. Everybody, because it took that long to take her outside. At the time, the, the level of the ground outside was lower than the threshold that you see there. It's a metal threshold on that side door. Because of him, and that wheelchair, and who we've ra since raised it, but he wasn't able to come back to make use of it. But I saw, and many of us saw, the effort it took to get her out, then lift her into the white station wagon, parked outside dutifully. You know, one else parked there. That park was for him, was for her was for them. He had a way of calming her because when I would come to bring her communion, she'd get very agitated and talkative. And he knew how to reach forward for that stuffed toy that she had to put in her hands. He knew how to calm her. He understood her so well. It's one of the few times that I have seen the truth of the wedding vows that the two become one because they truly understood each other. He truly loved her. They truly understood each other. My dear brothers and sisters, what a witness for our dear congregation. I didn't know he was a pan man, otherwise I might have involved him in the choir, but it would have been difficult because he was at her side all of the time during the Mass, so he wouldn't have been able to play. But what a sense of humor he had. When I would go to the home to bring her communion, if she couldn't come to Mass here, I observed his humor again to help pull her out of that agitation that she would have before the priest came, when the priest came, and so on. She had that Irish respect for the church, for the sacraments, and for the priests, her own brother being a priest. And I heard the story of the ordination, the movement to the ordination of the priesthood many times from her. In case I forget, Father Michael Coburn sends his best regards to her and to the family. He remembers well the difficulties in the confirmation class, Simon, that he was a new priest and he helped solve whatever was going on there. But he remembers your mother very, very well and very fondly. He doesn't ever forget to remind me of how faithful she was and how helpful she was, diligent she was, efficient she was as a parish secretary and being very, very um, careful and helpful in the establishment of the stewardship program in this parish. He himself would, would preach and know just how to impart the method of stewardship of giving, of self-giving, of sacrificial giving, but she seemed to have known just how to, to execute all of that. I believe that in her brief stint from here to St. Finbar's, um, 
she and Father Giuseppe being very strong-willed people, she went on vacation to St. Finbar's. And by the time I came here six years ago, she was calling me on the phone. Um, at first, when she first sent me an email, I wasn't sure if it was a hack or not, because she loved to type in capital letters. And until I realized, yes, it's who, and capital, I wonder if capital letters meant she was raising her voice or, or making a, um, a, a point. But anyway, inadvertently turning on the capitals might have been the, the, the point there. But back to Nali then. When it was Wednesday of Holy Week, I was brought to the side of someone who was dying at the time and very low according to his relatives. So I anointed him, heard his confession, gave him Holy Communion. And as I left the house, I felt I should come and see Nali. I felt I should bring Holy Communion to them. The caregiver, um, at that time in the morning, around 10, I guess, was taking care of them and freshening them up. So I waited a while and then went in. God spared me the chatter that morning because she was asleep. And so I just attended to Nolly. He was very coherent. He was awake. He was grateful, grateful for the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist, for the anointing. And he would die in a few days after. I used the opportunity to remind the congregation because you are from different parishes. That's what the sacrament ought to be. It ought not to be looking for the priest at quarter to 11 in the night when the person has already died or has just a little breath left. You see, at that time they cannot hear, they cannot give a good confession, and some of them cannot swallow. So let's take that as a lesson. Always send for the priest, not for last rites. Mm -mm, that approach is becoming very superstitious, I notice. As if to say they can't go to heaven without last rites. But ask, answer me this. If I anointed somebody last week and they're beginning to shift on, on next Tuesday, what sin could they have committed between last week and this week? Only maybe in thought. But you think that that could prevent them from getting into heaven? Look at the picture there of the divine mercy of Jesus. Jesus asked St. Faustina to tell his beloved priests to speak of his inexhaustible mercy. That's what his inexhaustible mercy means. There's enough for everybody. And tell my priests that those priests who would speak to the most hardened of hearts, I will fill their words with wondrous power so that even the most hardened of hearts could be healed, could be converted. So the mercy of God is within the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And it is just that. It is the anointing of the sick. One day before my mother died, I saw that glassy look that comes with death. I heard the rattle in her throat, which comes with those who are dying. Also, I could see that she was looking straight ahead to her goal of heaven, and I knew it was within the last moments. So I asked Dr. Lao Shutang to come and see her. Dr. Lao Shutang, a very gifted and beautiful doctor, I dare say has the gift 
of settling patients. And she was happy that my mother was at ease and was comfortable. And she left. The next day, at 3 minutes to 2 p.m., I was at the traffic lights, and my, my mother's caregiver called to say that she had just gone three minutes before. I called Dr. Lao Shutang and I said, Doctor, I need you to come right away. She understood what that meant because she had seen her the day before. But you see, that process of the doctor's visit shortly as somebody is going low and coming after, she could pronounce the death because she knew the cause of death. She had seen her the day before. Please, my dear brothers and sisters, I know that we get confused. I know that we, we kind of lose hope and forget everything. And a simple detail like that saves us from waiting several hours for a DMO and the police. And then the police have to wait if the DMO is not there, if somebody dies in their home. And your neighbors wondering, calling, sending texts, wondering, what happened? Because the police are outside. We can save ourselves all of that by developing an attitude of vigilance with our elderly. Take care of them. Do your best not to send them in a home. You see where Nolly died? Right next to his wife. His caregivers had the, the foresight to realize he was going and pull their beds together. So they could be together in one last moment to hold hands as he was leaving this world. That's the kind of vigilance diligence and care you and I need for our loved ones. Don't distance yourselves. We must not put them away. Let's do what we can to take care of them. The, the care, of course, is very professional and we don't all have the ability to lift a person to take care of their bruises or their bed sores and so on. So, so yes, we have to resort to care in a home or so. Care at home can be quite expensive, especially if it goes through the night and so on. But if we can, let's do it. Because a person dying in their own home with their loved ones under their own roof is comfort for the dying, is, is safety and the security of knowing this is my home. I'm accustomed to seeing all of these people and all of this. When someone is dying, when as soon as you notice the shift in, in condition, send for the priest, send for the doctor, get their ID card out. Because when the funeral home arrives, they need to identify who this is, to take a copy. Dr. Lao Shutang had her own book of registration for those who have died. So she just had to fill out a page, stamp it, sign it, and have it ready for when the funeral home would come. These are di very difficult and painful details to hear now, but take note of them, write them down, make a list so that when the time comes, and we begin to go into sorrow that we don't forget. Appoint somebody to look after those details. Be careful of those who are good friends of the family, who are foremost in wanting to help. Sometimes they cause a divide or confusion. I was at a meeting a few weeks ago and I received a call which I only could listen to after a whole day had gone. And the person was looking for a priest to do a funeral 
in St. Peter's here in Karanash because the parish priest had another engagement that same time and that same hour, that same day, and he was happy if I would do the funeral. He didn't even realize he was sending a message to the parish priest. So I called him back diplomatically and politely, and I said, I am sorry, I have a priest meeting on that day, so I too cannot do the funeral. He had not yet caught on. He says, well, you see, I'm a friend of the family, and I wanted to help. I said, yes, I appreciate that. Are you coming to the funeral? He says, yes. I said, well, OK. He says, oh, by the way, I just got a message that we got, finally got a priest. Maybe he's not going to that priest meeting that day. I said, well, obviously. I said, anyway, when you, if you are coming to Karanaj, since you are not from the area, welcome to Karanaj. He still had not caught on. I went to Facebook to see who was this so helpful. He's a Presbyterian. My dear brothers and sisters, that's just, just an aside because our friends really want to help and they, they come forward to assist. As we go forward then on Nolly's tributes, remember that in this parish we admired him very much. We saw his humor, we benefited from it. We are grateful for his Catholic upbringing, his loyalty as a married man and as a father. We benefit in every parish community from the married, from the faithful, from the respectful. May you and all others who mourn his going, his loss, be built up because of this gracious man. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us stand for the prayers of the faithful. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. For Nali, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company and friendship of the saints, Lord, hear us. For our dear brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day, Lord, hear us. For our deceased relatives and friends here in Trinidad and in neighboring Ireland, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. For the family and friends of our dear brother, Nali, that they, you may be consoled in your grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. O God, our shelter and our strength, receive our humble offerings as we make them into the hands of the mother of Jesus who wept at his death, his crucifixion, and welcomed his resurrection. So we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. O God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brother. Cleanse him of any sin he may have committed and grant him the fullness of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated. 
and pray for Joan, whatever she might be enduring at this moment. We have the collection now. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant, Nali, may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore overcome with Easter joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven, are full of your glory. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord our God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord our Hosanna. Hosanna, 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 Hosanna. Let us kneel. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. Together, my Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, my Lord and my God. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jason, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Nali, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say together, Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Jesus, Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Jesus, Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Let us kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of heart Of Nali, your servant, in the sight of this world, he has passed on. In your sight, may he live forever. Forgive whatever sins he may have committed through human weakness. And in your goodness, grant him everlasting peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Into your hands. We can stand. Because God has chosen to call our brother Nali from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. But the Lord Jesus Christ will change our mortal bodies to be like his in glory, for he is risen, the firstborn from the dead. So let us commend him now to the Lord, that God himself may embrace him in peace and raise up his body on the last day. In one final tribute to Nali, if you'd like to stretch your hands in prayer towards his mortal remains in the casket. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. May his soul and the souls 
Through the mercy of God, rest in peace. May the angels take you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you on your way and lead you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and with Lazarus, who once was poor, may you have everlasting rest. May the love of God and the peace of Jesus Christ bless you in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and may God Almighty bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. The final hymn.